Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In some of the recent support sessions that I've been doing with customers, one of the common topics that's been coming up has been where to locate a work coordinate system on a setup and why I choose some of the locations that I do for the tasks that we're doing. I thought I would run through a few different examples to show some of the positives and maybe some of the drawbacks to where you select your work coordinate system when creating your setup inside of Fusion. So what you see on my screen right now is a traditional vise. It's got a fixed jaw and a moving jaw, and I've got a part set up in that vise. If I were to click on the setup that, that I have, what you'll see is that there's a piece of stock that wraps around the part and I've got my work coordinate system set on the upper left hand corner of the stock. So that's a very common uh, corner to use. The other common corner to, uh, to use is the upper right hand corner. So that's just a personal preference. Do you want it on the left or do you want it on the right? If we come around and look, you'll see that the left face of the stock is lined up with the left edge of the jaw. So this would allow me to use a vice work stop or maybe a flat edge, or I could even probably just eyeball this in close enough for the first operation so that as I put other parts into this vise, I don't have to reset my XYZ work coordinate system between my setups. I can just put the next part in, providing that in this case it's the same thickness, and I can run my next program without having to reset any work coordinate systems. Now, a drawback of using the upper left-hand corner or the upper right-hand corner would be if the piece of stock wasn't cut to the same length that we defined it as inside of Fusion. So what we'll see here, if I move to the second setup, I'm gonna turn on a piece of stock and I'll click back on my setup name. What you'll see is the way that we've defined the stock inside of Fusion is the yellow box and how the part was cut, how the stock was cut is the gray box. You, so you can see that there's extra stock on the right hand side. And I added a tool path to this to see what happens here. So if I were to simulate this, when we start to move the tool, you can see I'm at roughly my 20% engagement that I want right here. And as the part goes, or the tool goes around the part, when it comes to this other side and starts to make its turn, now we're getting close to that 50% engagement. And at the kind of feed rates that we run for an adaptive, there's a really good chance that we're going to break the tool as it encounters all that extra material. So that's one of the big drawbacks with setting your recording system on the upper left or the upper right, is that if your stock isn't cut quite right, you, you run the risk of breaking the tool. Now, one of the things you could do to combat this is when you define your stock in Fusion is you can just define that stock a little larger than what you really intend it to be. That way, if somebody cuts the stock a little bit on the large side, maybe on the left-hand side, you wouldn't cut very much or nothing at all, but you wouldn't break the tool when you get around that other side because uh, Fusion would think that there's supposed to be stock there. That would help you out in that scenario. I'm gonna exit the simulation. I'm now gonna move on to the next one, which would be to set the work coordinate system on the top center of the stock and for this one I need to go turn off one of the bodies that I have on so let's expand this off and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut that body off and so now what we'll see is if I turn the stock on again in this case the stock is longer than the part that we defined in Fusion so you can see the yellow represents the stock as we defined it in Fusion and the translucent gray rectangle represents the stock as it was cut in extra length when whoever uh, made the cut cut the stock. But this time the error is divided equally on the left and on the right. So if I come back down, I've got a tool path for this one. And if I simulate this, when the cutter starts to cut, it's definitely engaging more than that 20%. It might, it might be able to handle this, but the good news is as it comes over to the other side, it's taking that same amount. It's dividing the difference between both sides, giving my tool a better chance of surviving that cut and making it through. So there's one of the benefits of using the center of the stock over using one of the corners. If the stock isn't cut to the correct length, generally your tool can kind of overcome that and not break as you go. So I wanna move on to the next part and activate that. And you can see that this is a completely different part, but it's the same thickness as the part that we were just using. So again, my work coordinate system is gonna be the exact same location as this work coordinate system. So you can see as I jump between those two, the work coordinate system doesn't change on the screen, only the preview changes. So there's the stock for that one. 
Now the drawback to using the top of the stock like this is as soon as I switch to a part that's taller, so you can see this part is taller, if I go click on my old recording system, the top of the stock used to be down there and now it's way up there. So every time I change to a different thickness of part or stock, I have to reset my Z axis. I don't have to do my X or Y, but I have to reset my Z axis based on that new thickness. So there's some things we can do about that as well. If I activate this next setup, up, which is back to the original part but this time I have it set on the bottom of the stock and the back face of the jaw and the left hand face of the jaw for the X and the Y so the X and the Y would be the same as the original one we looked at but now I'm touching off on the bottom of the stock or the top of the vice jaw and as I switch to my next part you can see that still works out the jaw opens up a little bit more but it's still the exact same work warden system the benefit to this method is as I switch to different size thickness of parts, the work warden system can still remain down on that vice jaw and I don't have to update it. So between these three parts, I wouldn't have to change anything on the work warden system. And the goal is to make parts, not edit your setups out on the machine every time you need to switch and do a different part that you're working on. So hopefully that kind of gives you an example of touching on the upper left or upper right or the top center as opposed to using the bottom center or bottom left or bottom right and some of the benefits and some of the negatives that you would get for doing that. Now I also have in this design some other vice methodology and this is called zero point work holding. And if you're wondering how the things on my screen are changing, I'll add a card so that you can see how I've shown how to do this in a previous video. But what I have is I've got sync visibility with active setup. And as I create the setup, I'm defining the part that I want to machine along with all the fixturing that I want to be involved with in that part. So I'm going to edit this setup for a second because I've got the work warden system not where I want it. Um, so I'm going to do a dock box point and I'll hit OK. So right now the work coordinate system is up on that top center of the part, but that's not exactly where I want it to be. The way this work holding system works is that we can go and we can turn, we can have a common location on something like this plate that the vice is located on. So if I were to edit this setup, what I would do is on my origin, I would choose a selected point and I would choose this work coordinate system that I have defined, the joint origin is really what it is, on that fixture plate and then I could hit OK. Now when I do that, I've got that work coordinate system located down there and the part is the part and the vice and everything are set up in cam and so I can just go ahead and machine this part. Now I do have to make sure that I have the stock relatively centered left to right when I set this up out in the machine, but that's pretty easy to do. What this system allows me to do is I could switch to a completely different vice and setup by activating this next setup there. And now you'll see that I've got the work coordinate system for this one set on the top of the stock again, just like I did for the last one. But now we've got an additional plate that's an adapter plate for this smaller vice. So what I wanna do is come and turn that vice off for a second and I can even turn off this plate. So I'll use that to help me find that plate in the browser. And I'm gonna edit this setup. And again, I'm going to choose a selected point. And I'm gonna choose the, the joint origin or work horn system that I placed on that plate. And I'll hit okay. Now everything turns back on. And you'll see that the work coordinate system between this setup that I was previously doing and this setup is the exact same location. So I could keep running parts all day long without having to reprobe in my work coordinate system at all, at least for the op one, right? Maybe as I flip parts and work on different sides, I have to set work coordinate systems. But for op one, they're always gonna be the same location because I've set that once on the table and I just need to make sure that I adjust my work holding and get my models accurate in my fusion setup and I can just go ahead and program my part. Again, keeping in mind that I would have to put the stock and get it centered in the, the jaw relatively close because we're not actually touching off on the stock as it sits in the vice jaws. I hope that was helpful for some people to understand some of the benefits of where you touch off your work coordinate system, maybe some of the drawbacks, and also see some of the advanced systems you can do like zero point work holding that allow you to not have to worry about touching off on work coordinate systems between parts at all. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.